this point, this is going to be part of it, because welcome to Plugged In Chat and Kent, your business podcast. We are here today with uh, InSoar Innovation, uh, using their location down on 202 King Street in Chatham. And uh, so we've got uh, some special guests with us, today, with us today, as I can't talk, but apparently I'll do my best. I'm going to pass it around who we are with. Uh, I'm Anthony Wilson. I am not the special guest. I am the recurring guest. beautiful, handsome EDO officer for Chatham Kent Ward 6. <laughs> but my beautiful guests are right here. I'm Brent Ripley, uh, the owner of Benny Bright Dry Cleaners in Chatham. One of the cattle across from the radio station. Woo. This is my son, who's currently taking <laughs> media and film in London. So he's sitting in here to see what it's all about. Just yes. watching 15 years from now, he's going to be directing movies that have like the equivalent production of like The Terminator and Titanic mm-hmm. and Avatar. Uh, that's, that's why I'm being really that's nice to you. That's a big. When you're big, you want to know that I was nice to you. No, no pressure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no yeah. pressure. Yeah. So, did we get your name? Did, did Brian. You? Brian. 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 There we go. Okay. Perfect. Uh, so, Anthony, you, yeah. you call them. I'm, I'm yeah, call we're them. we're actually delighted to have uh, Betty here. <coughs> um, I've been a customer of theirs for for quite some time now, and uh, they won me over with quality. And uh, but just recently, they've done some renovations. They've had some milestones in terms of anniversaries, uh, and just getting to know Brent and Tammy, who is his much better half, who is not able to be here. She's and holding down the fort. The holding down the fort, and, and is the brains of the operation. Her, her, her words, yeah, right? her, yeah. Words. <laughs> her words, <laughs> her words. Um, I just I've gotten to know them, and uh, they have a really good handle on business. Um, but they're also a great support for the community. Uh, so before I pass the mic over, again, just we had a mentoring event and uh, Brent was one of the guest speakers. Uh, and I'm learning today that like he's held some communication afterwards with different uh, mentorees, if you will, some new entrepreneurs that have been uh, you know, seeking his advice and he's been giving that willingly and whatnot, which is the whole purpose of the thing. So I'm glad. Yeah, it's a fantastic uh, idea. Um, at all. Getting business people together with new people starting out. I only wish that I would have had that when uh, when I started out. Yeah. Um, I started out with my dad out of high school, seventeen years old. Didn't know, and and a lot of people don't know this. The only reason why he got in the business is uh, he hurt his back, so he had to find something else to do than what he was doing. Mm-hmm. So he went in to uh, start looking around, and his best friend said, "Hey, let's go do some dry cleaning. Two months training is all he got." Jumped into it, started doing it, figured it out, see what he was doing. Had my mom involved, everybody. I started after school, started working weekends. And then, um, unfortunate events happened at high school. So I started earlier when I was 17. Um, started working. <coughs> me. Figured out right early on that we were one of the smallest in Chatham. And the only way that we were going to get busier was to advertise. Hmm. The quality was there. He was always quite quite adamant on quality and cleanliness. Mm-hmm. I remember many nights scrubbing the floors and mopping them and scrubbing them and, and um, you could, he, he was from an army background, so it was like, a, a, you know, bounce quarter off the floor kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. So um, he always instilled that in me with the, the uh, cleanliness. Uh, and to this day, we still do that in the laundromat. One of the things I wanted to, to uh, you talked about the advertising and marketing. At the mentor event, you mentioned a truck that you bought, mm-hmm. and it's 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 the one that's out front, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. the old one. No, I bought I bought a nineteen ninety one Pontiac Transport. Remember the ones that looked like space shuttles? They had yeah. like a long yeah. front end on them. Yeah. I bought. I sold my car, and I bought that and plastered Betty Bright all on the side of. The, Drove it every day. That was my everyday ride. I put over 380,000 kilometers on that vehicle, just driving it every day, um, which was huge. The advertising that I got out of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I just learned early on. I went through all the different ways of advertising and trying to figure out the best ways to do it. I started with postcards and flyers and paper ads. And of course, that was before the internet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Before we had all that, we just celebrated 40 years. Um, so, yeah, it was my dad was old school. Um, didn't believe in advertising. We don't need to advertise. We're busy enough. Dad, we're sitting down in the afternoon playing cards. 
who can be working, making money? <laughs> who can be a lot busier? Um, and then when uh, um, me and Tammy bought the place in 99, the wife, <coughs> we um, went from there and took off. She was, she's from a uh, um, customer service background, was a waitress for years and stuff, so she had all the skills as a waitress. And uh, we all know that a good waitress can keep the kids occupied so the parents can enjoy themselves and you get a better tip. So you, you have to learn. <laughs> You, you have to learn customer skills. She started doing repairs. We started exploding. Next thing you know, we had wedding parties and everything else in there. And I can remember where we were on Richmond. Um, we would have six girls in there getting, waiting in line to get in the bathroom to change into their dresses. And it was a pretty crazy time, but that was, we started advertising more. And I started doing crazy stuff. I've always done the crazy things. <laughs> I've learned over the years that, um, remember that guy? We used to listen to these commercials. Uh, uh, get a good deal. There was a dog or something involved. There was a, a used car salesman over in Detroit. And I always remember, I didn't know anything, but I always knew that dog and all, get a good deal. This dog. So we always, I always emphasized stupid, idiotic you know, like roses are red, violets are blue, bring in your pants and we'll fix them too. And just all <laughs> stupid. What was the random thing things? that you were talking about at the mentoring event, though? The catchphrase. When I wake Kyle, crossing the radio station. When I wake Kyle, yeah. crossing the radio. That's and when you sit off the bat, by the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. oh yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. But I've been, I went into the radio station and I said, okay, <coughs> record this. When I wake Kyle. And I did, I did it about five times and we picked the best one and that tagline is on every <coughs> commercial I do. Hmm. And everybody remembers it. Everybody remembers it. Actually, everybody knows where the freaking radio station is now because they know where I am. Right <laughs> 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 across, across the street. Radio station. Yeah, right across the street. Right, right. Yeah, <laughs> radio station's right across the street. I said to them, they should be paying me. Yeah, if you heard that Blackbird, <laughs> apparently you're supposed to be paying him. So. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you guys can have some free marketing. <laughs> that would be it. Because yeah. I would make all my own commercials. We bounce stuff off each other. Um, come up with some stupid idiotic. I don't give any specials away. I don't. It's all about information, where I'm at. If you need your suit done, because we all know that nowadays, you know, everybody only has one suit and you only wear it special occasions and stuff. So, yes. I'm just gonna take my suit, honey. Why don't we tell Chris and radio station? <laughs> and it works. And to keep them, I have to put up the quality. Yeah, well, the quality is definitely there. I wanted to talk to you a bit about, you talk about things changing in 40 years. Some of the big changes you've done this past year because of uh, environment and uh, uh, yeah. and some of the chemicals. You, I remember talking about Well, we, we had, uh, um, I always, when we were over on Richmond, I was um, always adamant about a laundromat because it goes along with dry cleaning, goes along with repairs, goes along with the cleaning whole process. Um, so I looked at a bunch of different laundromats. I looked at one in Dresden, Tilbury. I was looking at all these ones that were for sale and stuff, and found out early on that laundromats not for sale unless it's done. <laughs> they made their money out of it, and now the machines need fixed in, and it needs cleaning, right? It needs to be fixed. So once you start doing that, you look at the new equipment, and it needs better water lines and better drainage, and they're more efficient now. Mm -hmm. The machines are. So I had the opportunity to uh, buy to lease the location where I, but I had to do the reno. Um, so I got I paid like uh, I was paying almost twenty four hundred dollars a month on Richmond at the end of my twenty year lease, hmm. and I moved to where I am less than half, and I doubled the size. So, but I had to do the reno. So I was work 12 hours and then go and swing a sledgehammer until midnight every night and then get up the next day and go and work every day. So it doesn't come easy. You know? we, we, we worked our tail off to get where we're at. And then put the machines in. I searched out the best machines, the most efficient, mm -hmm. um, energy efficient, the best hot water tanks, the most energy efficient hot water tanks. If I'm gonna go in debt, why not? $5,000 more is not gonna make that much difference. <laughs> I might as well spend the money in and get the big equipment. Yeah. We did that for the first half. Um, and then it came to a point where 
the dry cleaning, I really noticed a big difference in the environmental. Um, it started getting a lot more strict. So it started to make me think, what's it doing to me? What's it doing to my kids? You know, what's it doing to the environment? So I started looking at it and then um, we started having problems with the machine and a little bit of leaking and stuff, so it had to be fixed. Two guys came in the building, uh, Ministry of Environment, six foot five, bulletproof vests on, guns strapped to their side, and, and uh, they said, new regulations were, you have to start saving your fuzz. I said, what? So I'm, uh, I'm saving my sludge, and that's exactly what it is, it's sludge, water, yeah. fuzz, filters, um, I said, that's it. What's it doing? If I'm saving the fuzz, what's it doing to my lungs? What's it doing to my hands? My whole... Life. So we made a decision to uh, reinvest back in the laundromat, sell the dry cleaning machine. So we sold the dry cleaning machine, got right out of it, and invested the money back into the laundromat, and we expanded the laundromat, made the laundromat bigger, bought it, <coughs> checked out the equipment, got the best... The same equipment because it was running fantastic. And something that people don't seem to realize is you got to maintain it. Mm -hmm. You got to do your maintenance. You got to keep it clean. You got to make, you know, that's the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I stopped dry cleaning and I jobbed it out. So I lowered my carbon footprint and had somebody else do the cleaning for me. Well, I'm, you lose control. I don't have the control anymore of what, and they don't care. I don't care what anybody says. That, now they're cleaning their competition stuff, and if I'm busier than they are, then they can't tell me they're not going to be, well, I'm not going to clean that twice. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. So we started running a lot with that. We started looking around. Different technologies that are out there right now um, for the environment, and there's plant-based stuff. There's, But we went to about four dry cleaning shows in different places, and this new technology comes from Europe. Um, comes from Italy. And from Italy. Yeah, yeah, I was just going to ask you about that. So one of the things that I find is really cool is that you're very uh, eco-conscious of your mm -hmm. your environmental uh, footprint, if you will. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to ask you a question, okay. and you can tell me how the Italian stallion, how it helped your eco-footprint to minimize that. The you probably have to explain what the Italian style is. Too. <laughs> well, yeah. Maybe even who named it, but uh, anyways. It was, uh, um, it, it is from <coughs> Italy, and it's a uh, uh, totally new technology. Um, I had to stop what I was doing. The biggest thing before, where dry cleaning comes from, there's no water. So that's why I call it dry. Mm -hmm. um, it, all it was was a big washing machine it filled with chemical, added soap, washed back and forth extracted, took all the chemical out, and then it went to a drying cycle. And it dried back and forth until it was dry. So you put it in wet, come out, dry. Well, no, I'm sorry, you put it in dry, it comes out dry. Comes out dry, okay. And then you press it. Um, this technology, it's totally new chemical with hydrocarbon, and the mullet, it, it cleans in a mist. So it actually mists inside, and you can see a fog where it cleans in a fog. Um, the hydrocarbon molecule attaches to the dirt molecule and pulls it away as it dries, um, and it doesn't extract. So it doesn't spin. Like, I mean, the other machine had, it was, what was it, 7,500 RPM. So it would, like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was like, you know, 12 inches into the floor, it had to be bolted into the floor. Wow. You know, a big five horse motor on the back, <coughs> so it can spit out. Um, this one doesn't do that. This one is so much more delicate, so much more. So it's, uh, um, and it does a beautiful job on wools, the new, the new uh, materials that are out now, the new dresses, all that kind of stuff. I can clean sequins, I can clean leather, I can clean... And it, um, it used 30% less water. It uses, it doesn't even connect to any um, natural gas. It's not even connected to my boiler, so it saves on the, that. Um, has its own heat source, it's got its own heat pump. Uh, it, it's just so, the only thing I send away now by, it's 95% eco-friendly, which is 
filters. The, mm -hmm. the, the dirt and stuff has to go somewhere. So it goes in a filter and every thousand pound, every thousand loads, so it's about once a year. Mm -hmm. Then I have to send the filters away. So that's the only, that's about 5%. Mm -hmm. Other than that, so the new technology is phenomenal. Um, it's closer to coming out. I, I, I said to my wife when we watched it being used, the guy, he took his wife's uh, black sequin dress and it had all the fancy beads and sequins up right from the neck right all the way down. And he went over to the lunch table and he grabbed a ham and cheese sandwich and he took the top bread off and he went all the way across the grass and we're like, <laughs> fun he probably yeah, Tammy's like, you should, and he threw it in the machine, pulled it out, and you couldn't even tell. None of the sequins were ruined. Amazing. Uh, it came just gorgeous. Uh, the old technology, it would have all stuck together. It would have come out in a ball. Mm -hmm. it would have destroyed the dress. Yeah. Um, so this technology is so much better on the, the new clothes that are out there right now. Um, I will be contacting Moors if you're watching this. <laughs> um, about the new suits that are out there right now, um, they are um, form fitting. They are uh, um, really thin linings and really thin wools and materials because that's the style now. Yeah, it just looks right. That's the style yeah. that people are wearing. This machine is so delicate on that kind of stuff. The suits are coming out beautiful. Uh, they, I actually seen a thing where somebody had said they were told not to drag them. Don't get a dry clean because it ruins the suit. Mm. Because of that spinning, because it just twists everything all up. Yeah. Um, for instance, I just did a tie. Um, a gentleman actually had, I don't know where he got this done, but the tie had his kids. You flip it over and his kids were on the back side. Like, you know how they do that print? They do a printing of a oh, yes. picture. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Two young kids were on his tie. Wow. Sublimated, I think. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what they call it or how they do it, but um, the tie turns out gorgeous. There's no twisting. There's no sweaters turn out beautiful. So this machine is has far exceeded my, mm -hmm. um, uh, what it can do. It's it far exceeded my expectations of what it can do. Um, I am thoroughly impressed with it. Um, uh, I'm, so I'm helping the environment. I'm helping my environment. I'm helping your environment with every pair of pants I clean. I'm saving the environment. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's phenomenal. So you know, please bring your stuff in and check it out and come. Yeah. And matter of fact, right now, every time you bring your two piece suit in, I'll give you a free half sub from Subway. Subway's yeah. on board with me and agrees with the technology. And uh, um, he said, "Here, like, let's do this." So we're. We're giving away half subs. Just come and give me a shot. Try it out. My fact, awesome. I'll guarantee it. It looks beautiful. That's awesome. Yeah. I uh, one of the reasons I was excited to have you on, on the podcast here today is because I we we never we want to do a better job in economic development of thanking businesses who've been here. You said for forty years, and you just reinvested back into China. Mm -hmm. You brought the you did all of this research. You have put money into this technology, and and thank you so much. For bringing that to Chatham and Chatham Kent, this is this is really impressive. This is huge, and so you know, uh, I can't speak on behalf of Stu, but I uh, I think uh, he would definitely say uh, thank you, and I know I do uh, for for doing this. This is this is fantastic because without it, without your investment in in this, it wouldn't be here, and this wouldn't be an option. So yeah, thank well, you so much. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, uh, you don't hear it enough. But um, I'm kind of selfish. I didn't do it for anybody else. I did it for me. It's one of those things where I have to, I had to reinvest. Yeah. Um, uh, the, the technology is there to be utilized. Um, in Europe, they've really been really stringent on their mm -hmm. environmental. Um, the environment over there is getting pretty bad. They've been around yeah. a lot longer than we have. So, it, you know, it's getting pretty bad over there. They, California just recently banned, I think it's 2020, where you can't dry clean in California. Yeah. The old, the old dry cleaning method, perchlorethylene, um, it's heavier than water, so it goes right to the water table. Um, at one time, it was a great technology, um, but now it's not. And it's funny how before, when I used to pre-spot, you had to put a little drop of chemical on each little spot and take it out. 
Um, you couldn't use water. You had to avoid water at all costs. There was no water because water would be shrinkage. Do you know what my body chemicals now are? I have a spray spot and I have water. Water <laughs> activates the spray spot. Sorry, I just yeah, did. yeah. It sounds like that. Too. I love it. I love it. That's my dollar store sprayer. <laughs> That's the job. Right? It works. Great. It works. Job. So I've had to change everything I'm doing. Uh, I'm learning every day, which is for me extremely exciting. I love it. Every day, I have a purpose every day now. Um, it just gives me so. In that same aspect, we've hired two full-time girls. Um, you know, the laundromat's busy. <coughs> uh, we're busy. So, and and with that, we invest back in the community. We do a huge Christmas cares dinner every year. Um, every Thirteen years. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Actually, yeah, this is probably really a good opportunity to. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd love to talk about it. Yeah. It has turned into this great big. Um, I, I would say like a hug from the community. We people come to us and they ask us. They they give us money. Everything from twenty dollars from somebody their bingo money to businesses they give us a couple hundred dollars, and we'll take that money and we'll go to one of our business partners and we'll talk to them and we'll say, okay, well, if I buy two hundred dollars worth, what will you give me? So their way of giving back is they'll give me four hundred at their cost. So I'll take that money. I'll go and invest it in, and I'll grab money. And now we've got people to give us stuff and. Um, so what we do is we have, it's all volunteers, people come out, they help cook it, help clean, help serve, help clean up, it's all donated, and then at the end of the night, all the soup kitchens show up, um, and they take anything that's left over, so now, instead of that $200, I'll take $100 out of that $200 and ask for the food, and I'll save that $100, and I'll go and I'll buy stuff for the soup kitchens and they'll put it aside mm -hmm. so at the end of the night we'll give them not only that we'll give them 10 cases of water we'll give them you know all these other, and it's i am not gonna pat your back and say you did a great job and i'm not gonna put a plaque on your wall saying you're a great person you just know you are and that money's gonna go to the right place we've been doing it for 13 years and we've never ever had a problem raising the money and instead of me giving money away to somewhere, some organization that pays for administration and pays for advertising and everything. I, it goes directly right where it's supposed to go. And we've always done that. Um, and now it's turned into, geez, this year we've got economic development. I mean, now, now we've got um, community futures involved and um, economic developments involved. We've got, uh, we're going to be bringing food right to the homes to the houses. Yeah, I forgot to tell you, you're going to be doing some deliveries. <laughs> That's wonderful. You know what? It can <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm cool. I'm, I'm, that yeah, sounds great. great. Now we're, we're bringing meals to the <coughs> seniors. Um, you know, it's just turned into this Santa Claus. Tammy's brother wears her dad's suit and comes out and we usually about 150 kids we get presents for. We line up all the way around the whole gymnasium of all the kids you know, coming up for a, now what we're getting is the people that have come and volunteer, have come and had a free meal, now they volunteer. Yeah. So now we get people volunteer, now in the kitchen, the soup kitchens volunteer. So now the whole kitchen is run by all soup kitchens that volunteers, because they know the money, everything's going back to them, and yeah. it, you know, they want to help too, so they're involved, and it, it's just turned into this great big, yeah. It, it makes me cry every year. Seriously. Big guy like me. Big guy like you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So when is it and where is it this year? Um, Do you have that finalized? Oh, yeah. It's yeah. always at the first Sunday of, the, of December. First um, Sunday of December. Yeah. yeah. And it's at the Wish Center. The Wish Center. Tammy over at the Wish Center is fantastic. She does everything she can to help out. They volunteer the space. Um, and we make sure when we leave that place, it is completely cleaned. All the tables are put away, dishes are washed, everything's done. It doesn't even look like we've even been there. Awesome. So it's it's like I said, it's just a bunch of businesses that want to help out, and a bunch of people that want to help out, um, put you in the Christmas spirit. My kids have uh, sacrificed. I'm sure you've had some pretty good memories of doing it. Mm -hmm. Both my kids yeah. were there volunteering every year. 
<coughs> uh, my daughter's birthday is on the 10th of December. She's given up some of her birthdays. <laughs> So, and we run a business, and I'm working 12-hour days. So, anybody that says they can't do it, they can. I have a whole handful of fingers for them. <laughs> God damn <dead>, it. <laughs> but on the positive note, <laughs> which will end almost yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, it's, it's just one of those things where, yeah. you know, people, uh, it, it, we just, the reason why we started doing it is because Tammy's dad passed away, and he used to do the soup kitchen at Praise Fellowship, and we wanted to continue doing something, and that's how we started doing it. That's great. That's yeah. good, as, good as any reason, I guess. Yeah, and it's just blossomed from there, and some stories, oh my God, uh, um, you know, where people come in, the cleaners, and a lady come in, I, you're feeding all these people, they don't need to be fed, and you know, I can't believe they're wearing brand new hats and using new cell phones, they're coming for a free meal, and I said, you know what, but they have a kid bringing their child with them. And the child might not get a Christmas dinner. They might not get, the kid comes in and he's going to remember that. He's going to remember the community helped him out. And, mm-hmm. You know, they came for a dinner and they got to see Santa Claus and everything else. Um, she went out and she bought, came back with three envelopes. And each envelope had gift cards and from the grocery store, gift cards from Walmart. And she said, find some people that deserve this. So we went to Tammy at the Wish Center. Um, and we asked her, and she said, yeah, I yeah, I mean, there's Mary, there's, you know, and she's come up with three people. <coughs> so I think it was three days before Christmas, we went and uh, we visited these three people. Um, one, the one grandma, um, motorized cart, she was driving, three grandkids walking behind her, lived right around the corner. Um, we went and knocked on the door and here, you know, this is from the community, something the community cares, have a Merry Christmas, hand it to her. And uh, she started bawling. You could see her sobbing. We sat in the car and bawled. Um, went to another house. Um, she had two handicapped ch- children with her, and she lived in gear to income. Hardly any furniture in the house. Oh, no, no, I can't take it. And I said, you know what? This came from somebody that wants you to take it and wants you to do something with it. And gave me a big hug and, you know, big cry fest. And um, the last one, the husband just lost wife, uh, auto accident, didn't know what he was going to do, he said um, he won't be able to afford the rent in the house they're living in, so he said, I have no idea what we're doing or anything, so I just went, he was mad, I thought he was going to throw it at me, he come running out to the truck afterwards and crying, thanking me, um, now my kid's going to have a Christmas and I can go get some food in the house and um, uh, I really appreciate this. This would be my leg. I'm gonna pay it forward and and everything else. And yeah, it's it's tough. Um, but those years are the years that you remember. Those years are the years that um, keeps us moving forward. And it reminds us that it's not about the money. There's people out there that don't have. They're going to soup kitchens every day. People that don't have a blanket, they can open their cupboard and pull a blanket out of their cupboard. And, we open our refrigerators and there's always food in the fridge and mm-hmm. you know these a lot of people don't have that there's people are struggling every day so if you can help them out you know maybe next year they're going to be the ones that are going to help in the kitchen and next year after that they're going to go get a job and then next year after that you never know what they're yeah and so if people want to help it how do they get in touch with you or best they get in touch with you or? yeah i would say the best place would probably be at the cleaners <coughs> probably be at the cleaners it's okay. got it's gotten to the point where we get so many volunteers that we have one person giving away a butter pod. One person giving away a bun. <laughs> one person we spread it out as yeah. good as possible. As as and try and help out as much as possible. We even, we even uh, now we don't wrap any presents. We, we bring wrapping paper and tape and scissors and have at her sitting on the table. There's like 30 people sitting at the table wrapping presents. and So it's, it's, it's just a good feeling for everybody. And I think we've had volleyball teams show up. We've had hockey teams show up. Uh, we've had uh, air cadets with their uniforms and show up and help out and, and so uh, you know all that experience to help them they're getting hours for school but at the same time it, they're seeing something that you know what you know maybe that iPod I get from everyone and iPods are past eight now aren't they no such thing as iPods anymore <laughs> yeah like what's he talking about <laughs> <laughs> is it like one of those phones that does uh, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. is that a thing you put a CD in <laughs> Yeah, see, well, I have a hockey team that uh, is interested in helping you out. 
Yeah, tell them. Come on. Uh, give them a call to Cleaners. Yeah. That that would be neat. So I'll, I'll talk to you about 519 So what's your address? Yeah, we'll 108 Kyle! Kyle. Okay, thank you. Radio 108 Kyle across the radio station. Yeah. We gotta we gotta start wrapping this up because we've we've been a good half an hour, but uh, good, good. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, this has been fantastic. Thanks for having me. I appreciate you asking. That's yeah. uh, that you need to be doing more of this. We need to get some people to realize that I own a business, but I have kids and I have bills and I have just like everybody else. We you know, we're everyday people, we live in this community. So this more businesses should be open. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you for all you guys are doing. Don't forget about my man Brian yeah. here, who's going to graduate in a couple of years. He's going to be a big, famous movie producer. Um, Hopefully, he remembers that I was kind to him today, so I get <laughs> free course. stuff and free movie passes and all that fun Definitely stuff. Definitely free movie passes. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. But Brian is also part of this whole thing because Brian works there in the summer and mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, he grew up with it too. Right? Exactly. So. Yeah, growing up with us not being there. Yeah. <laughs> because we were working all the time. Yeah. 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 That, business, uh, <coughs> a family business, right? Family it, business. It's a family business for a reason. Yeah. 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 But at the same time, you know, um, family businesses, husband and wife stay together. Kids are closer. Even though we don't spend as much time together, we're actually closer than families that have the time. Well, that's yeah. pretty cool. Okay. All right. Betty Bright dry cleaners. What a way to cross the radio there station. You go. There we go. Go out and see him and uh, <laughs> chat with Ken. Stay classy. And don't forget to check us out at investck.ca. Good job, guys. Peace out. Peace out, homies.